right. Well, good evening. evening. Y'all can respond to that. Y'all can. That way they know somebody is sitting here when I'm talking. So, but uh, let's try that again. Good evening. Good evening. Okay. Good to see you guys. You know, we did just have our, our business meeting, and we're thankful for those that tune in Facebook or YouTube Live. We're grateful for you guys also. Let's go to the Lord in prayer, and then we're going to open God's Word. And if you want to be turning to Acts chapter 2, that's where we're going to start, Acts chapter 2. But let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this evening. Just thank you, Lord, we were able to have a, a business meeting, and uh, that's an administrative type thing, but Lord, you tell us that we're to do things decently and in order. And I'm just grateful for each person who's come out tonight for that. And Lord, I'm grateful we can gather at this particular moment and pray, Lord, just to pray and pour our hearts out to you, but also, Lord, to open your word and find out how we can be ready for the day of the Lord, how we can be ready and have others be ready to when they encounter Jesus Christ. So, Father, thank you for this time. Thank you for this evening. We pray all this in Jesus' name. And God's people say Amen. 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 So, as I said, we're going to be in Acts chapter 2, but while you're turning there, it's just to remind you that Operation Christmas Child is ongoing. You can see over here we've got quite a few boxes already packed. There's room for more boxes, okay? So please bring those in. And November 15th is the last day. If you get it here after that, then it's on you to get it to wherever it needs to go because after that date, we're, we're not uh, doing that. Also, we have a Discover uh, Indian River class that's coming up, not this Sunday, but the next Sunday. Be in prayer for that. And if you know someone who might be interested in participating in that, hey, say, I'll go with you. I'll sit in that class with you. And uh, let's, let's go be part of this and just find out more about Indian River Baptist Church. So encourage you for that. And also you're going to be hearing about, I don't have a slide for this one, Mark, but Angel Tree for reaching out to our homebound. You'll be hearing more about that this Sunday, but I'll just give you a heads up on that one too. All right, so we're going to be in Acts chapter 2. Uh, I actually read this part of this scripture this past Sunday as I introduced our sermon series, you know, be ready for the day of the Lord. We're going to do sermon series in Zephaniah. And so it's a small little book. But in that small little book, he references the day of the Lord more than any other prophet. It's really pretty amazing that he, other prophets reference the day of the Lord. And it's referenced in the New Testament. But Zephaniah does it actually more than any other one in just three short chapters. Uh, that's pretty an amazing feat, which means let's pay attention. If it's something that's repeated consistently like that, pay hey, Pay attention. And so I had quoted in Acts chapter 2 where Peter on that day of Pentecost is preaching and he begins to talk about the day of the Lord as well. But he's referencing back to the prophet Joel. And so let's look at Acts chapter 2 beginning in verse 16. He says, But this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my men servants and on my maid servants I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And so Peter is telling that what they're witnessing, the resurrection of Jesus, and now the Spirit has come upon the church. He's saying, this is like the day of the Lord. This is what Joel talked about, how he was going to pour out his Spirit. Because just prior to this, they all thought they were drunk, right? They thought, Who, what are these guys doing? Because they were speaking in one language, but people were hearing them in their own language. So it would be like if I was speaking English, but a Japanese person heard me speaking Japanese. I mean, I don't know Japanese, but if I'm speaking English, can God interpret that between here and that person's ear? That's what was taking place. And so the people thought, hey, something's up with these guys. They must be drunk. And Peter says, no, nope, we're not drunk. We're, we're filled with the Spirit. And this is a reference here to the day of the Lord. And so he points this out. And so what is the, the day of the Lord? Is it one specific day or is it a period of time? Uh, and the answer is yes <laughs> to both of them. It's a specific period of time, uh, a, a particular day, but it's also a, a larger uh, encompassing time. 
Uh, I'm going to read the definition that I read this past Sunday, and I'll read it again. It is that it's that one key understanding to the phrase the day of the Lord is to note always identifies a span of time during which God personally intervenes in history directly or indirectly to accomplish some specific aspect of his plan. So God is intervening into the affairs of man. Now I'm going to say since the day of Pentecost, has God continued to intervene in the affairs of man? Absolutely he has. And how do I know that? Because I got saved. The Holy Spirit came into my life and I got saved, mm -hmm. not because of my works, but because of what God, and I'm not just claiming that for me, I'm, you, if you're saved, you know, you believe in Jesus Christ, that is God intervening in the world, and so in that sense, this is a span of time since the day of Pentecost to where we are, we're experiencing that day of the Lord in that sense, but there's also the aspect that there's a day of the Lord that's like, boom, <laughs> that's like, whoa, this is a specific particular moment in time uh, the article that I was quoting from and I encourage you if you ever are looking for something biblical related and you come across got questions got questions.org they're just very reliable and biblical in their answers I would I haven't come across anything yet that I found questionable uh, I'm not gonna say there isn't something but for the most part they have been pretty good so I would you know recommend them commend them to you but it talks about the a lot of people associate the day of the Lord is with the period of time or a special day that will occur when God's will and purpose for his world and for mankind will be fulfilled. And so that's kind of what we just talked about. Then there's others who think, some scholars believe that this day of the Lord will be a longer period of time than a single day, a period of time when Christ will reign throughout the world before he cleanses heaven and earth in preparation for the eternal state of all mankind. Uh, this would be what's called the post-millennial view don't necessarily subscribe to that in the sense that you know the advancement of the gospel is so much so that the whole world just believes in Jesus and there's just this turning to Jesus on and then Jesus comes back uh, I don't believe that's the way the scripture points it out there are going to be people rebelling up to the very end and then other scholars believe that the day of the Lord will be an instantaneous event when Christ returns to earth to redeem his faithful believers and send unbelievers to eternal damnation and it is certainly encompasses that as well. So let's look at a couple other passages here in the New Testament to help us understand this day of the Lord. Peter says what was taking place the day of Pentecost, he said this is in the fulfillment of the prophet Joel, and it, yet he's talking about a specific, you know, it's more like a, an extended period of time. But there's also that aspect that it's when God comes to set things right. God's going to come and take care of the wickedness in this world. Look at 1 Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Beginning in verse 1. It says, But concerning the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I should write to you. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. But you, brethren, are not in darkness, so that this day should overtake you as a thief. You are all sons of light and sons of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love and as a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Therefore, comfort each other and edify one another, just as you also are doing. And so here he's talking about this day of the Lord is gonna happen, and God is gonna judge sinners. But he's saying is you, as a believer, you can stand firm. You, as a believer, can persevere in the midst of these things. And he says, it won't overtake you as a thief. And so basically he's telling you what? Be ready. You know, if you knew when a thief was going to come into your house, and Jesus talked about this, if you knew the thief was coming into your house, and you had a 12-gauge shotgun, wouldn't you probably be sitting there waiting for him? And then just go... <laughs> one time and he'll take off running right because you would be what you would be ready 
I'm not recommending that. I'm just using that as an mm -hmm. illustration here. But if you knew he was coming, you'd have all the lights on. You'd do something to make sure, hey, this is not the time. You're not robbing me tonight. And so we're to what? Be ready. Always. Because when can Jesus come back? In time. In time. I mean, any moment, really. Mm -hmm. Literally. He can come back any moment. And you know, it may be 10 years before he comes back. Maybe a hundred years before he comes back. I want you to know, I, I don't plan on being here in a hundred years. So if Jesus, so unless some happens massive with science or whatever, I don't think I'm going to be here when I'm 160 years old. That's just not going to happen. So if it's a hundred years before Jesus comes back, I think I'm going to see him before then. I guess is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. So I just need to be ready. I don't know when that day is. I'm not anxious to go like any moment, any time, like this second or anything. But I'm looking forward to when I do see Jesus. And that's what he's telling us here. Be ready. He says, now for the unbeliever, it's like, you know, he's going to come and they're going to be just, what? What is this? They're not going to understand. And they're not going to be ready for it. And we are to be ready and notice what he says there in verse 11. Therefore, comfort each other and edify. And I think for believers in Christ, sometimes we get, you know, scared when we think about end times. You know, because it is a horrible sounding thing, you know, the judgment that God is going to bring. But for the believer, it is to be comfort for us. Because guess what? We get to be in his presence. We get to be with him. Let's look at one other verse here in, in the New Testament. 2 Peter. 2 Peter chapter 3 <clears throat> verse 10 2 Peter chapter 3 uh, verse 10 I got to look at, looking at the looking at the wrong second something there mm -hmm. that doesn't make sense that doesn't sound like all right, so 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 10. It says, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. I think we heard that somewhere else. The Apostle Paul said something just like that. In which the heavens will pass away with a great noise, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. Therefore, since it is all these things, therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness, looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved, being on fire, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. And so again, he's saying for us what we have to look forward to. You know, one day God is going to make a new heavens and a new earth. Which means he's going to get rid of the old heavens and the old earth. He's going to transform them. They're going to be made new. And almost in a sense like Jesus' body goes into the grave. And he's dead and lifeless. And when he comes out, he has what? A resurrection body. It's, it's transformed. It is new. And that power of the resurrection extends to us as believers. That when we die and we are in the presence of the Lord, he will raise this corruptible body to be an incorruptible body but you know that power of the resurrection isn't limited to just us as human beings it, it transforms the entire creation the entire creation is what's at stake here because what a new heaven new earth he's, he's transforming everything he makes all things new and so we're to be ready for this we're to be prepared for this and if we are to be ready and prepared what should we be telling other people? Prepared. The same thing. They need to be ready. They need to be prepared. They need to be open to, to the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I just want you to know, we had a, a, a homeless guy came by today and was talking to him for a little bit. Uh, actually, I had gone and came back. And while I was gone, he came. And I guess Karen uh, gave him a, a Bible and gave him a bottle of water, gave him something to eat. And, uh, and as I was coming in, he was walking around the, the building over here. So I ended up talking to him. And he just began to just share. I was talk, telling him the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it's one of these things, you, you know, never met the guy before. Probably won't ever see him again. 
But, you know, where is his mind? And I was just saying, have you ever called on the name of Jesus Christ as your Lord? He says, no, I don't think so. And so I showed him in Romans chapter 10, you know, that whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. We just read that in Acts chapter 2. It said that very same thing, whoever calls on the name. And I said, would you like to do that? And he was, I thought he was ready. I almost thought he was going to say yes. And then he, then he just got distracted. Well, there's too many birds chirping out here and stuff, you know, something like, so I'm just trying to just assess where this guy is, but, but it just re reminded to me, there are a lot of people out there that don't know Jesus Christ because he, by his own confession, he said, well, no, I don't remember ever calling on Jesus as Lord, but he was talking about, yeah, I feel like I have God in me and I feel like I've got it. It's kind of like, it doesn't matter about your feelings. I tried to remind him of that. It's about the fact Jesus died on the cross was buried on the third day rose again that's where our hope is and because of that we need to tell people this so pray for this uh, young man just pray for him after the video goes off I'll tell you his name but just to, to pray okay that God would speak and intervene in his life but we need to be ready for the day of the Lord and we need to sit, make sure that those around us are ready for that day of the Lord and if it's 100 years before Jesus comes back, they need to be ready for when they're going to stand in front of Jesus. Because I would dare say most people who are alive today aren't going to be around 100 years. Although there's some, some people, Miss Toddy lived to be, what, 102. So they, you know, it, it is possible. But, but you know what I'm trying to say. You know what I'm So let's be ready for that day of the Lord. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, again, I just thank you and, and praise you for this evening. Thank you for this time. Thank you that, Lord, your word gives us encouragement and hope to think about the day of the Lord. Sometimes, Lord, it is it's like doom and gloom almost. But, Lord, it, for the believer, it means that you're act, acting in this world. You're intervening in this world. And, Lord, we thank you for intervening in our lives. That, Lord, decisively you saved us. You brought us from death to life. And for this we give praise. So, Father, help us to move forward. And, Lord, we pray for the young man that I talked to today, that, Lord, you would bring clarity to his mind and heart. And I, again, don't know exactly where he is in the sense of his reasoning abilities and those things, but I, I just pray, Father, that your word would penetrate. And I pray your word would penetrate this dark world and that, Lord, people would give their heart to Jesus. So, Father, we praise you. Lord, we love you. Pray all this in Jesus' name. God's people say it. Amen. Amen. Let's say our vision verse and conclude this time, and then we'll, after the camera goes off, we'll, come, we'll have our prayer time together. But let's say our vision verse. Declare his glory among the nations.